Morning, everybody. It is Friday morning. It is Hacking Self Stories, and I am your host, Dean Booty. So today, um, I wanted to share with... I know that I was going to do my numbers today, and if it's okay with you guys, well, actually, do you know what? Even if it's not okay with you guys, I'm still going to do it. Next week is going to be all about numbers. So Monday, it's my week in numbers. Wednesday is going to be the monthly figures, and then Friday, it will be my quarterly figures. So I will get around to all them numbers, but I just wanted to share something with you guys because I think it's very, very prevalent in our industry. And it's about risk and the tolerant for risk. The reason why this come up is because I was in a mastermind last week and we had a debate about risk. And I don't know if you guys know, but I used to have a betting shop. This is how I first started my, my um, stock, soft storage with money from a betting shop. So basically, long story short, at school, I was rubbish at school, hated school, hated the system, didn't learn anything from it because I just wasn't interested. Um, next door to Longcroft, our school was a race course. And so what I used to do is every time races were on, I just looked out my science lab and thought, oh my God, that looks so much better than, than school. So I hopped over the gates and um, I went to the races. I got, I just didn't, didn't go to school when races were on. I got friendly with a bookmaker. That bookmaker then gave me a job. He said, look, if you're going to miss school anyway, you might as well learn something while you're here. So I learned all about tic tacking. I learned all about, um, I think we forgot, but the, the guy at the, behind the bookmaker doing all the odds, but writing down the, what you're going to get back, et cetera. So I did all that. And that was from when I was about 13 years old. I worked with him all the way up to about 17 years old on course, loved it, went all around the country with him. And it was really, really good. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't good money, but I knew then that I wanted to start my own betting shop. So I started my own betting shop on the caravan park. Uh, that did okay, but it was just, uh, it, obviously it's a caravan park, so you're not going to make much money out of a caravan park. And then I started working all around Hull as a manager for different betting shops. Um, I then, uh, I was a manager again, and then I opened up my big uh, my big. Um, betting shop in 2006 yes 2006 and it went really really well absolutely stunning well it was it was literally the one of the best bookmakers one of the most highest revenue bookmakers in the country however in 2011 I could tell that everything was going digital because it's always you're always in business have to look at how you can be disrupted and what are the dangers to your business and I could see the massive danger to my business was was the fact that people were starting to back online and so we're doing it with the apps more. And so I thought, holy shit, if this continues, this trend continues, bookmakers are going to be out of business. So I put my I put the self store uh, the betting shop up for sale. And luckily, and not luckily, Corals came in with a big offer, £345,000. Uh, well, first of all, it's 320, and then we negotiated up to £345,000 and we sold it. We sold it to Corals. Since then, it's, it's been closed down. So we was correcting um, what we was thinking that apps are going to destroy the betting shop market. And that is how that I got the money, got the funds to go into, into self storage. So by nature, because I come from a gambling and betting background, my tolerance to risk is different, is higher than most people's. I understand that, I know that it's it's a curse, but it's also a massive benefit as well. I don't, at this point, I don't know which, I don't know which it is. Anyway, I was in this mastermind meeting and we were talking about risk um, because what happens in this mastermind meeting, there's 10 different businesses, or eight different businesses in a room and you all present for two hours, basically about your business and where it's going. Um, there was another business owner, obviously won't go into details, but it was in the health and fitness space. And for me, they've got a great product, something that I would be, I'd be moving fast. And me and Dan started, the, the facilitator of this meeting, the, the person whose mastermind it is, we started debating about risk because my tolerance to risk is much higher than somebody else's. And he was saying, no, you move slow, but steady and careful and you build the foundations, you build the structure and and that's how you grow organically. And I'm like, yeah, 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 I get, I get that, but I don't agree <laughs> because the opportunity might not be there. The opportunity might not be there in two years' time when you have the foundations to grow, when you can have, you know, maybe six months of costings in the bank. And I never have six months of costings in the bank because I'm always expanding. So <laughs> I just I just don't have it. Yes, ideally, by a business book, you are supposed to have that three to six months of um, of your expenses in the in, in the in the bank. And there it is for a rainy day. I don't I don't have that because I think it's it's um I think it's very, very sustainable is a self-storage business model. So therefore, I'm, yes, I am gambling somewhat, but I just believe the opportunity is going to, the, the opportunity every single year is going to decrease. Now, uh, again, I was, I'm, I know I'm bouncing around all the time here, but the opportunity in 10 years for self-storage will look different to the opportunity now. There will still be an opportunity, 
it'd be exactly the same as in America. The opportunity now in self storage is to is to build from greenfield sites, build from scratch. It's not for acquisition for me personally anywhere. Um, but in ten years' time, you will not. It, the, the greenfield sites will become less and less. The opportunities to open new sites will become less and less because the self storage there'll be loads of sites, um, and so the opportunity to get your foot in the door into a town, a city where it's under service will be will be definitely less and less as the years go on. But the opportunity will just look differently. In America right now, what they're all talking about is very, very rarely in my mastermind, we talk about a greenfield site. We talk about people buying sites, acquisitions, and then adding value. So the, the opportunity in 10 years' time will be different. There'll still be an opportunity in the self-storage industry. It'll just mean that I'll have to acquire self-storage facilities and that I'll have to add on my value in terms of operational skills and man revenue management. And that is where the opportunity will be in 10 years. But right now, the opportunity is, is, is greenfield sites. So where am I going with this? Um, it's risk and the tolerance to risk. And there is... There is a big, the problem is if I would have grown my self-storage facility in the traditional terms, in what the business books say, uh, I would have never opened Stormall. I was betting the farm. I was betting the whole house. I was, I would put it all on the line to open Stormall. So if you imagine we had a business that was generating 20 grand's worth of profit, Beverly, that's all it was generating, 20 grand's worth of profit, it, it, well, maybe 30, maybe 40, but it, it, in essence, it wasn't very much. And then we was open this million pound site. I mean, it just, it, it don't balance. It's not right. It, the risk to reward ratio isn't, isn't there. And so if I had followed everybody else's blueprint of what we should have done, I would never ever be in this position right now. I would never be, have a self storage facility that spits out cash flow. That, that's a storm or that's a big 30,000 um, square foot site. It, it, it's, it's our juggernaut. It's a, it's a one thing that allows everything else to be funded. But if I had done it in a traditional manner, if I had grown my self-storage facility in a traditional manner and been respons a responsible business owner, it wouldn't have worked. But then my question to myself is, when do I stop betting the farm? Because I'm, I'm now betting the farm again because I've took a personal guarantee out. We're, we're, getting, we're getting some great deals and because of a podcast and because um, I'm more known now in the self-storage industry than I was five years ago, then we are getting a lot of people contact us and funding. We are getting the ability to fund um, deals and, and where it can go down the asset finance route. So I'm very, very, very fortunate. But at what point do I stop lending money? At what point is enough enough? At what point do I just grow organically, use the cash flow from business to grow? And I don't know the answer to that question. If I'm honest, during Christmas time, currently we've got we've got two three sites open. I'm saying two or three, because when you listen to this, it will definitely be open. We took our first customer in for our new site on, on Sunday, but we haven't painted the floors yet. So the only thing we need to do is clean up and paint the floors and then we're open. So it should be, it, by the time you listen to this, it should be 100% done and dusted um, and we should be open. So let's say we've got three sites. Then the problem is I keep going around looking for sites. I can't help it. I can't help it. I've got one site that's going to be an outdoor um, unit site. I've got another site that's in South Shields that's going to be opening. And I've got another site that is in Boston that's going to be opening. So I've got three sites that two are with solicitors and it's going to be open. That's South Shields and Boston. And then the other one, we, uh, this is Monday when I'm recording this, we're putting in an offer sometime this week for this site. I just don't know how to, how to package the deal for this, this offer. Now, the problem is, what is the risk ratio that I'm, I'm prepared to take because all these sites cost money. It costs cash flow. And as soon as you open, it's not just the capital expenses. It's also the runway, the runway of cash, the burn rate of cash. We're going to burn cash. We're going to absolutely burn cash. So at what point do I think, okay, I know this is a great business model. However, I need to just be careful about my growth because it's, it's a lot of boring. It's, it, I've, I've got, I'm taking on a lot of debt and debt makes me feel uncomfortable. It didn't make me feel uncomfortable previously because I had nothing to lose. A £40,000 business, profitable business a year. Yeah, it's, it's not great to lose it, but it's £40,000. This is completely different. The last, um, our net, our p &L for the last quarter was £127,000 net profit, which isn't massive because there was loads of research and development, loads of other things that we, we put in there. So it's not massive profit, but it's, it's a decent size. It's a decent size. It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And over Christmas, I was, I was worrying a little bit because of how much debt I'm taking on because each site 
Um, it's going to be 200, 300, 300, uh, 600. I've, I've got a million pound, a million pound of CapEx expenses between Clough Road and the other new three sites. And that is a hell of a lot of money. And yes, we can self-fund some of it, but we can't self-fund all of it. And so it's a hell of a lot of borrowing. It's a hell of a lot of debt. And so over Christmas period, I was I was a little bit concerned. Um, so what do you do when you're concerned? What do you do? When I, I got I got Dave Davies to come down because I thought, you know what, right? I need Dave Davies visit all three sites because I wanted his opinions um, on them. And he goes, <laughs> and so he got to one site and goes, fucking hell, mate. No fucking brainer. No fucking brainer. <laughs> And that's exactly how he sounded, by the way. He was taking this piss out of me because he said, I don't know something you like that. I said, Dave, you do. And he goes, you can't. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't say that way. <laughs> that's what he said to me. Um, and then, so basically, all three sites, he said, there's no burner. They're all worthwhile. And so then I went to Dan Bradbury because I wanted to make sure. So the, the work from a, fin- uh, from a self-storage position, all three sites are going to do fantastically well. But obviously, we're going to bear some cash and the capital expenses. So then I wanted to go to Dan Bradbury and say, look, Dan, am I doing the wrong thing here? Am I growing too fast? Am I am I betting the farm when I don't really need to be? And from a financial point of view, it makes sense as well. Um, so it made me feel better. So the ultimate message for, for this is you have to take risk. At some point in your business, you have to take risk. However, you've got to dilute that risk by taking on advice, whoever it may be, whether it be your, not your accountant, I, I don't like a Dave Davies, like an industry expert, and then a financial expert as well, because but a financial expert who understands your business. It took Dan a year to understand the self stories and how it worked. The fact it was so, it was so um, the expenses, the the capital expenses were so upfront and so lumpy to begin with, and then down the line, that's when you started get, seeing the benefit. You started raking in the benefit. So it took him a year to really understand the concept and get his head around it. Um, and so you've got to take outside advice, but equally. I'm a great believer in you have to take risks in business. Do you have to bet the farm? No, probably not. But I, I have done and I am doing and I'm I'm standing by the self-storage industry. Um, me and Dan had a debate on this because he was saying, no, no, you're fucking wrong. You're absolutely fucking wrong. You don't have to bet it like you're betting. You don't have, you, there's a more responsible way of doing it. And my answer is, yes, there is a more responsible way. But by time... Uh, my time, I, this is, this is by the way, for another business, we were debating another business at the time. And he goes, no, you're fucking wrong. And you don't have, he said, you name me one business owner, one billionaire that's, that's, um, that's bet the farm and, and is, is really, really aggressive with the lending. And obviously it's Richard Branson, but then there's mitigating circumstances. But then I said, Elon Musk, Elon Musk, has, how many times has he met the farm with PayPal and with what he's doing now? It's loads, loads of times. So I just wanted to share I want to document this actually. Uh, one of the reasons is because I want to. I want to look back on this, and this is a pivotal moment for me. This is where I, because uh, I didn't I, over the Christmas period, I didn't know if I was doing the right thing. I didn't know whether I should be just growing slowly up on one or two sites, or I mean, I'm going from two sites last year in 2021. I had two sites, and now by June, I'll have six sites open. Six sites open. That is. That is massive that's a 300 percent increase and am i going too fast or am i taking advantage of an opportunity in a self-storage industry what won't be there in 10 years time it'll be there'll be there'll be still opportunities in self-storage industry, or opportunities don't vanish they just change they just morph into something different and so i wanted to share my um my journey really and what i'm doing and yes um we've gone back i, I always promised a wife that we'd never ever do a personal guarantee again and I had to go back and said, you know what, wifey, um, don't want a personal guarantee. And basically, she was she was golden with it. She was okay. But I, pr- I did say we'd never do a personal guarantee. We don't have to do a personal guarantee. Unfortunately, the lenders, the personal lenders that we've got, they do want a personal guarantee. And it's understandable. Why wouldn't they? Um, life is changing with the coronavirus, uh, with the economy at the minute. So I've gone back to a personal guarantee. I didn't know whether it was the right thing to do or not. But ultimately, I, I see an opportunity here. And I, I think the risk tolerance has to be right for the individual. I, I'm not comfortable taking the risk, but I believe in what I'm doing. And I may look back on this in two years' time, three years' time, and think, fucking hell, you absolute dickhead. You've ruined everything. You had such a good thing going. And there it is. There is a point where you absolutely messed it up. 
<laughs> you said that you was you had a risk tolerance and you was okay with a risk and the debt and, and look at what's happened now. You it's a pack of cards and it's all come tumbling down. However, I could look back in a couple of years and think it could be the storm or remember the storm or where um it wasn't it wasn't the proper business thing to do to open storm or it was definitely incorrect thing to do. However, looking back on that now, me opening Stormore has, has now propelled me into being able to take on this debt because we've got a strong balance sheet. We've got money co coming in all the time from Stormore and, and Beverly. And, and so I could be looking back on this and thinking, yeah, that was another Stormore point of view. And I've got six sites now. And then, you know, but then will I be risk Will I not be happy then? Will I want to risk them all to get, get to 15 sites? I'd, I don't know, but the, the, the more risk I'm taking, the, the risk I'm taking now, every single time that I'm I'm on this risk journey, the risk gets mitigated and it becomes less and less and less. So the next jump, maybe by the end of the year, I might have 10 sites, but the risk will become less and less because I'll have these, these mature facilities behind me cash flowing. And so it's your personal decision. It's up to you how you see how you see risk. I was talking to another entrepreneur today and they were talking about risk and they were talking about what they're comfortable with and how much money they're comfortable putting in. And it's interesting. What right is right for me isn't right for you. What's right for you may not be right for me. We're all different people. We're all different creatures. And the only thing I'd say is, listen, when you're inside the jar, you cannot read that label. So you cannot be trusted to make a decision on your own. You need to take outside counsel, whether it be a Dan Bradby, whether it be a Dave Davies, it needs to be somebody who isn't involved in the day-to-day -day running of a business because you can only, you're, you're emotionally connected to it. You're emotionally connected to the outcome. Therefore, what you see isn't what other people might see. And I, I just needed validation um, from Dan Bradbury and from Dave Davies. And I have got validation from both of them. What would I have done, by the way, if I wouldn't have got validation from both of them? I mean, interesting question. <laughs> but we've done it anyway. <laughs> no. Anyway, I just wanted to lay it all bare for you guys because um, I think that risk is a really, really potent question and conversation in the industry. And I don't think we have it enough because every business comes with a risk. It doesn't matter how bullish I am about self-storage. And believe me, I am bullish about self-storage long-term. It's... But it is, um, it is without doubt has it risks. There's no doubt about it. So yes, there we go. That's that's me over and out, guys. And next week I will talk to you guys about my figures and uh, what's gone right, what's gone wrong, and all that good jazzy stuff. As I'm trying to find the off button, there we go. All right, hope you've enjoyed this. I will speak to you guys soon. See you later. Bye bye.